grand rising. Let's have a little chat, shall we? Let's have a little chat. Let's have a little occult chat. In this early, early morning. I want to talk about a few things that I've been um, observing. Sipping my water. A few things I've been observing. I went back and I started watching the Omen, and for those people who are younger that watch me, the Omen were a, they were a series of movies that came out and starting in the 1970s, they did a remake in 2006. And basically it was about a little boy named Damien who turns out to be the Antichrist to give you a short synopsis of what the movie entailed. But when I look at it from an occult perspective, there are a lot of subliminal messages within that movie. And I believe they had four sequels. They had a television show that did not last in 2016. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Anything that has to do with the Antichrist, I like watching it. And the reason I like watching it is because I really think that that energy is misunderstood on some levels. And I think it was merged into something else. In the movie, like I said, this little boy, he was the Antichrist and everyone around him that stood in his way or who was a threat to him, they ended up dying horrible deaths. And when you look at it from a Christian concept, you will think, oh, he's evil. He is uh, the son of Satan, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But when you look at it from, a, from an occultist perception, and don't get me wrong, I believe there are many different levels of antichristness or the antichrist. And the word antichrist means unchrist like. And I think that that is where the confusion comes in. So if we take out the anti part and just tap into what some would call the darker side of Christ. Let's just say that. Because in actuality, when you really look at the movie, Damien wasn't fucking with nobody. When we really go back and look at that movie, The Omen, Damien was minding his fucking business. He was minding his business. It was others who started fucking with him. And when they started fucking with him, that is when other shit started to pop off and people started dying and people started trying to force, you know, Christian doctrine onto other people who were in contact with Damien telling them, oh, you're going to die, much like Christians do now. And let me say this as a disclaimer. This is not, <laughs> this is not, putting the so-called antichrist on a pedestal. But even if I was, I, well, I don't put deities on pedestals. I don't put anything on a pedestal over myself. And I think that is the difference between me and other people. The point that I'm making is this. Damien wasn't bothering anybody. He was born. He was prophesied to be born. He was living his motherfucking life. It wasn't until other people started Knowing, and sometimes they were they were so called innocent people, but it wasn't until they were deemed a threat 
that they started dying and being taken out. When you really look at what was going on on the planet at that time, during, you know, the Omen, when it first came out in 76, the first one came out in 70, in 76. I believe the second one came out in 70, in 78, although they're trying to make it look like it came out in 85. Don't pay any attention to that if you see it on Prime Video, the year 85. No, it did not. The second Omen came out in 1980, I'm sorry, in 1978. The third one, The Final Conflict, came out in 1981. And then they had a fourth Omen called The Omen Awakening, which was a TV movie, which was about Damien's daughter, Delia. That came out in 1991. You have to really look at what was going on on the planet at each of those time periods. In the 70s, there was a lot of fear of black uprising, much like it was in the 60s. And we know that Hollywood or Hollyweird or whatever you want to call it, the, the, the virtual world, and I'll, I will get into, I'll get into that in a minute. I don't know if I touched on that before, but I'll get onto that. I'll get into that in a minute. Hollywood, you know, is rooted into the occultism and into, you know, mysticism and all that type of shit. They study a lot of this shit, and that is how they were able to become the empire that they are, an empire within an empire, because they study and they practice different, you know, spiritual sciences and occultism and shit like that and different spiritual systems, and they put them in their movies. And they study people with melanin mainly. So at that time, in the late 1970s, there were a lot of uprisings taking place that a lot of people that did not get put, let's just say this, there were a lot of things taking place in the late 1970s. I wasn't born until 79. But there were a lot, there were a lot of things taking place in that time period that did not get publicized on TV. And I wasn't even born yet, and I know this. And that's because I'm I'm multi tri quantum. I'm a tri quantum being. And I understand the language and I understand the symbolism. There were a lot of things that were taking place during that time period that did not that did not make headlines. Number one, back in the 1970s, there was no YouTube, there was no Twitter, there was no Instagram, there was no Instacart, and I'm being facetious when I say Instacart. I know that is not a social media website. I'm being, I'm being funny when I say that. There was none, there was no YouTube, there was none of those things. So a lot of things were easily swept under the carpet. So during that time period, or maybe even a little bit before, because usually a lot of stuff takes place before. It could have taken place in the nineteen um, in the nineteen sixties or fifties. I don't know, but there were a lot of things that were going on occult wise and spiritual, spiritually, with black people. That a lot of our people, because we're so disconnected from spirit, we didn't know that this was happening to other people. So when we look at a when we look at a movie like The Omen, and when you really we we all know six 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 is about melanin. It's about the carbon, the electrons, the protons, and the neutrons that breaks down into six six six. We all understand that. So when you take away the sinister part of it, when you take away all of the 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 Christian uh, uh, theology and all of the Christian concepts as it pertains to the Antichrist or the so-called Antichrist, when you take all that away and look at it for a Hollywood movie trying to explain symbolism and trying to explain genetics, but what they had to do was they had to add, of course, the horror element to it to make it seem like it was something evil or something sinister. No, what was really going on at that time was that there was something going on like a lot of times with black people, there was something going on within the genetics of black people. 
there was something going on within the genetics of black people that was causing a reverberation across the planet. And you have to remember, this was around the 1970s, and this was at the, I don't know if it was at the height, but maybe at the middle point of the revolutionary movement, or it was at the point where the revolutionary movement was really dying down. And to further, see, this is Hollywood is a, is a propaganda machine. To further water down that revolutionary type of energy, they had to program the subconscious to be afraid of your own genetics. Because in actuality, what was going on in the omen, in actuality, the, 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 the people that were being, the characters that were dying in the omen, in actuality, that was a defense mechanism. That was a defense mechanism. And I was getting ready to make a point, but it kind of, it, it slipped me here to come back. It was a defense mechanism. And how they program you, or how they were, how they were programming people, they were programming people with fear to make people not want to tap into, I, I would say, their own, their own power, okay? But there was a point that I was getting ready to make, and it slipped my, it slipped my mind. Oh, here it was. In the Omen 3, the final conflict, when the Antichrist is all grown up, he was worried about the Nazarene being born, meaning he was worried about Christ being reincarnated into modern times. So he had every baby boy that was born on a certain day, I believe it was March 24th, March 24th. In the movie, he had every baby boy that was, that was born on that day, he wanted to have that child murdered. And he had so many disciples he had people working in all walks of life, the Antichrist. He had people working as nurses. He had, a, he had people working as priests in the church. And he ordered all of his people, he called them the watch. He had all of his people come together and congregate. And they had to murder any baby that was born on 12, on 12 or at 12 midnight on March 24th, in the movie now, and this is all in the movie, because he wanted to kill the reincarnated Christ, who would have been the person to stop him. So taking out, take out the Hollywood propaganda, take away the Christian, the Christianity bullshit. Now, the final conflict that came out in 1981, the 19, the early 1980s, there was still some revolutionary energy that was still circulating. So what that tells me is, is that they were trying to kill, they were trying to murder that energy. They were on a continuous journey to murder that energy. The omen was all about destroying black men and black women. That is what that was all about destroying the energy and the power that we had. And it worked for a lot of them. It worked. It worked. We got to calm them down. We got to calm them down. We got to, we got to, we got to make them, you know, make them bow down. We got to keep them quiet. So when I really examined the omen, that was all, that was all about us and our genetics. That was all about us and our genetics. And basically, and I'm not talking about no sinister shit. I'm talking about how I'm looking at that. Now, again, let me say this, because I want people to understand this. This is a spiritual channel. You're not going to get literal shit. You're going to get it spiritually because I don't see things like other people see them. I'm a spiritualist and I see things differently. I'm a tri-quantum spiritualist. I don't see things the same way other people do. I see things the way I do. 
Now, if you're looking for literal intellect, this is not the channel for you. This is an occult spiritual channel. Let me say that first so people can understand where I'm coming from. And I look at everyday life and I see the occultism and I see the hidden messages in everyday life. So this is not your average channel. And I'm, and I'm hoping that the new people that are watching me, I'm hoping you understand that. If not, then bye. Simple as that. This is not your average channel. So follow me when I say this. This isn't personal. This is spirit and everybody sees things differently, okay? You have to look at everything, as I mentioned earlier, that was taking place on the planet at that time. In the 1970s, it was still the height of the revolutionary movement. And they wanted, and they had to, and when I say they, I mean the powers or the, the fake powers that be, they wanted to calm that down. And they use Hollywood, of course, as a propaganda to do that. And of course, they put a white boy in the role. But the powers that Damien possessed, and then at the end, this white Jesus comes and defeats Damien, that was all symbolic of them destroying or uh, 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 bringing down our power. Or subduing our, po our power. So going back to the 1981 omen where the Antichrist wants to kill the, the, the children, the, 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 fur, the, the, the boys, the baby boys born on March 24th, doesn't that sound a lot like the story of God going through Egypt and taking the firstborn of every Pharaoh's son? Doesn't that sound similar to that? Maybe it, it may not be the exact same thing. But you know, they always say there's nothing new under the sun. But remember, in Genesis, God went to, God went through Egypt and took the firstborn of, of the Pharaoh's sons. And a lot of people don't like the Pharaohs, but in actuality, God was the one that was out of line. Whoever that deity, whoever that God was that, that people worship so much, that God was out of line. And that's not the same God that you hear in, 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 in the latter parts of the Bible. It's not the same deity. And I don't give a fuck who gets mad about me saying that. It's not the same deity. But it's similar to what the Antichrist did in this movie. See, we only get small portions of that Bible. We only get a little bit of that Bible. We don't get the whole story. We don't get the whole story about what really was taking place in Egypt. We get, oh, the Pharaoh was enslaving people and all that old bullshit. I don't know. I don't know. But when I really examine the Omen 3, the final conflict, and you have to look at that number three. When I really examine that and I compare it to the story in the Bible, when God goes through Egypt and takes the firstborn of the Pharaoh's sons, it sounds similar to me. It sounds very, very similar. So what was the real reason? Not what they told us in the Bible. See, this is what makes, this is what occultism is. Not what they told us in the Bible, but what was the real reason that God wanted to go through Egypt and kill the firstborn of the Pharaoh's sons? Because see, even going back to Charmed, when you go back to Charmed, the show Charmed, the prophecy was that the, the first sister or the oldest sister would be the most powerful. And that would have been proof before they killed her off. And then later on, I guess Piper, she took, you know, the, the role as, you know, as the older sister. And ultimately her powers were the greatest. But had Prue lived, Prue was the oldest child. So what is it about the oldest child that is special? Because see, let me tell you, when I was born, I was the oldest I was the first. And when I was born, 
I was the first grandchild and the first great grandchild. And I'm the oldest child, period, of my mother. But I was the first of, you know, of the grandchildren to be born. And when you are in that position of being first, there's some power that comes behind that. So who really was that God that was taking out the first of every child of the pharaohs? Who was that God? Was that the Antichrist of that era? If we look at it in layman and um, more um, simple terms, because see, I'm looking at it as a as a place of power. I'm looking at it as genetics. What was going on at the plant on the planet Earth at that time, where they wanted to eradicate certain people? Then we have to look at it like this too. 1981, the late 1970s were they were they were very sinister times. They were very sinister times. And let me be clear: this doesn't mean that they were trying to kill babies literally. You know, as I stated earlier, you know, Hollywood is all about dramatics and making movies dramatics, dramatic and and you know, horror and horrible to get an audience to watch. But remember in the late 1970s and the early 1980s, I know the first case was not until maybe towards the mid 80s, but from what my elders tell me, crack was out in the 70s. In the late 70s, they tell me that crack was out. It just wasn't as main stream as it is now. So we have to think about the era at that time. It was the crack era and it was the AIDS era. And when you go back and look at the omen and you compare everything that, that was going on on the planet at, at that time, it connects. So it would make sense that they that this would, would, would happen. And look at how the black community has been ever since then. Even going back to the movie, The Network, and that's an old movie from the 1970s too. That came out in 1976 too. See, all of that is, all of this shit is connected in some way. A lot of it is connected. And I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I am a spiritualist. Okay? I just see things the way that I see them. I'm not saying that they're right. I'm not saying that you got to believe it. I'm not saying that I'm 100% right. I don't give a fuck if I'm 100% right or not. I'm telling people how I see things and I have the right to do that. And I've talked about I've talked about this before. Going back to the movie The Network with Faye Dunaway, that was a peep into the future. And in the in the movie The Network, it was really about how social media was going to take over. See, the real antichrist is social media. It's not a person, but what they're going to probably end up doing is they're probably going to end up putting a person as the face of it. And then that person is going to say, well, I'm the Antichrist. But in, in actuality, the Antichrist is YouTube, Google, it's um, Instagram, it's uh, TikTok, it's all, uh, uh, what, what else? Twitter. It's all of these, it's all of these institutions. That is the Antichrist. And the, the Antichrist has many faces. It's not just one person, excuse me. It's not just one person. The Antichrist has many faces. When you go back to American Horror Story season eight, when they did that entire season about Michael Lang, then he was the Antichrist as well. He was a shit, he was a poor shit antichrist he was not he was he was some shit but when you go back to that and you really examine that particular genre of the antichrist remember the lady wilhelmina venable told them i am the face of the cooperative and the cooperative was a was a secret organization that was basically you know doing the bidding for the antichrist 
That is who the cooperative was. And it was made up of so many different layers of people. So I just wanted to say that because I went back and I looked at the Omen and the Omen, you know, I've always been intrigued by those movies, the Omen movies. And when I really look at it as a spiritualist and an occultist taking away the Antichrist part and just looking at the power that was behind, behind it, people look at it as evil, but in actuality, I'm not talking about the Antichrist and harming innocent people. I'm talking about the power that we possess inside of us that gets suppressed by Christianity and that entire belief system. Because when you really examine the omen, like I said, Damien wasn't bothering nobody. They were bothering him. They were bothering him. He wasn't bothering them. And then they had the one with his daughter called the Omen, the Awakening. It was the same concept. People were fucking with her. It's the same thing with me. People who, people who fuck with me. And then come to find out, I pick up the phone and call and talk to some random person that I haven't talked to in a while. And they'll tell me to somebody that they be like, you know, so-and-so didn't have a stroke. And you know that so-and-so didn't die. And you know so-and-so did this and so-and-so did that. I'd be like, what? Because you be fucking with the wrong people. You be fucking with the wrong people. It's not about Damien. It's about the power that we possess. It's not about being a, a fictitious figure that they're making up. It's about the power of our genetics that have been suppressed throughout time. So when I really look at the 1970s to, to shut down that revolutionary energy, the 1980s, the continuation of shutting down that revolutionary energy, and then in the 1990s, when it seemed like that revolutionary energy was not quite gone yet, because that is what that was all about. When they brought back the Omen 4, the awakening with Damien's daughter, Delia, they were telling us that we can't kill these motherfucking niggas. We can't, we can't, we can't do it. It's just something we, 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 we trying to, we're trying to shut them down, but we just can't. Well, they've done a pretty good job of doing it now, though. They've done a pretty good job of doing it now. I don't know what the fuck is wrong with black people now. Well, yes, I do, but I'm not going to get into that. You all know how I feel about that. But sometimes, and I've heard other spiritualists say this, sometimes you have to go back to the past to understand what's happening in the future. You have to go back to the past to understand what's happening in the future. I remember there was a lady on here, and I'm not going to mention her name, who was wishing death on everybody, on everybody in certain sectors. It was a lady wishing death, and, and from my understanding, I don't know how true it is, but some people saying she's dead. She's been gone for a long time. She was wishing death on multiple people, and now she's gone. Some people say she's dead. Some people say she's not. I don't know. But the fact of the matter is this. If she is dead, this is what happens when you get in other people's way, when you get in other people's path. And people kept trying to get in, in Damien's way because they had to stop it. They had to stop him because it was their belief that he was evil, according to what the Bible said. But in actuality, Damien didn't do anything. It was others who were fucking with him. If you didn't fuck with him, he didn't fuck with you. For the most part, you know what I'm saying? But again, that was a movie. That was a movie. If you, you know, that was a, a whole movie. That was a fictitious storyline, and that is not how things work. But it makes sense why in the late, it, it makes sense why now in the early 80s, and, and, and another thing too, HIV and AIDS really started in the, 
it really started becoming a problem and noticeable in the 70s, late 70s. American Horror Story just did a whole season on that called American Horror Story New York City, where they really delved into the AIDS epidemic, and it was really sad. It was really, really sad. It was a bunch of, you know, gay white men that were dying of AIDS, but it was really, really sad. I don't wish that on no fucking body. That was really, really sad, and it really, really brought up a lot of emotion in me because I am gay. You know what I'm saying? So it really, it, it was really sad seeing that happen. But again, you have to understand what was really going on at that time. There was a certain frequency that those, but I'm not talking about these gay people of today. You know, I'm not talking about them. The, the LGBT community of today is more artificial and it's more AI. And AI can stand for antichrist. It can stand for Antichrist, not the actual initials, but it can be symbolic of Antichrist because Christ is spirit. I'm not talking about the Christian concept. I'm talking about Christ. I'm not talking about Jesus. I'm talking about Christ energy. That's spirit. And you don't see that. You feel it. You hear it. Like I feel it right now. And there are many different avenues to that energy. It's not just one. But the gay people on the planet at that time, they brought in a they brought they brought in a certain frequency. They brought in a certain frequency, and the so-called powers that be, they had to shut that shit down. They had to shut it down because whenever you're bringing in a certain frequency, that kind of raises the vibration. They want to shut you down. You know, I was looking at something, but anyway, let me say this first. So it makes sense why the 1970s and the early 80s were so detrimental for black people, especially, and the small communities of gay people as well. It makes sense because HIV and AIDS was really um, it started being an issue really and truthfully in the 1970s, the late 70s, but they didn't know what it was. They didn't know what to call it. They just knew that a lot of gay men were dying of this disease. So, and then you had the crack era that started around that same time. I think one of the first um, well-known uh, cases for crack or someone dying from it was Lynn Bias. A lot of people may not know who that name is, but look him up. He was a basketball player, and I think he was in college or something. I don't know. This was when I was a child, so I don't know. But I remember how the crack epidemic really fucked up a lot of people, especially here in D.C., my own family being victimized by that. My aunt told me, she said, Sear, she told me when I was a little boy, she said, Sear, whatever you do, don't ever get on no motherfucking drugs. She's dead and gone now. She said, let me tell you something. Don't ever get on no motherfucking drugs. She said, do not repeat what you see me do. She had AIDS, this particular aunt. She had AIDS and she was on crack. So that's why my spirit can speak to this because it's ancestral. She also told me, whatever you do, this is when she was on her deathbed. She said, let me tell you something. Whatever you do, always protect yourself out here with these motherfucking men. She said, "All oh, this." she was on her deathbed telling me this. She said, make sure you protect yourself out here with these men. She said, always make them wear a condom. And I told her, I said, Aunt, Aunt, I said, Aunt Sheila, I'm going to do that. She made me promise her that. She said, always protect yourself and don't ever get on no drugs. She said, do not do what I do. Do not do what I do. You see what I'm saying? So the AIDS epidemic, the crack epidemic, it coincided with each other. It was happening behind the scenes long before it, excuse me, before it became public. The AIDS epidemic really got a lot of attention when Rock Hudson died from it and Liberace 
because they were two, you know, gay white men. Well, Rock Hudson, a lot of people didn't know he was gay. You know, he was a, a good looking white dude in the movies. And a lot of people didn't know he was gay for the longest time. He was even married. But then around the 70s and 80s, you know, when he contracted HIV, people put two and two together, especially when he was on Dynasty playing um, Daniel Reese. He really looked sick then, really sick. So it makes sense now the omen and everything that it represented. It made sense. It was talking about not only the crack epidemic that would further destroy black people in our energies, but it was also talking about the AIDS epidemic and how it would further destroy black people and our energies. And the Antichrist in, in, the omen, in, in, in the Omen 3, when the Antichrist wanted those babies murdered on March 24th, on March 24th, because he believed that they were the Christ, because they were, they were trying to get rid of spirit. They've been, they, they have been actively trying to get rid of spirit on this planet for a long time. That's what that was really all about trying to get rid of spirit because the antichrist is not spirit the antichrist is carnal is materialistic is an illusionist and that is why i say you can't believe everything you see on youtube you can't believe everything you see on insta instagram or tiktok and none of that other shit that's why i don't believe what other people say about other people on youtube because a lot of these people are, are up under the Antichrist energy. People call it a spirit, but the Antichrist, and if I've called it a spirit in, 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 in the past, my mistake. The Antichrist is not a spirit. It's an it's a energy. It's a thought process. It's an entity, not a spirit. Antichrist is materialism. It's greed. It's hate. It's stalking people online because, you know, in the omen, Damien's followers would stalk other people. You know, again, that was a movie. You know, I talk about it in different layers to give people an understanding where I'm coming from. So symbolically, when Damien wanted those babies murdered in the omen three, they were talking about what was going on in real life. They were trying to kill spirit in the black community. And in the 1980s, that is when things started getting watered down, especially when you went into the more latter part of the 80s, the more late. See, I, I, was, I was there. So I saw the change. I saw how even, even within the food, the food started tasting different even in the later part of the 80s. And in the 90s, the food tasted totally different because they were removing spirit. Now you have to really put spirit back into your food. You have to put soul back into your food. But they're telling everybody to be vegans, but there's no soul or spirit in that. That's dead. especially the way they're going about it. Let me say it that way. That's just like what I was going to mention earlier. Shelley Duvall, people who don't know who Shelley Duvall is, she played in The Shining. Remember, she played the um, Jack Nicholson's wife and the, mother, the boy's mother in The Shining. She played Olive Oil and um, Popeye. Shelley Duvall, okay. Shelley Duvall has been having a lot of issues over the years. She stopped acting around 2002. And every time I talk about, you know, she's a good case study. And you can look at her and tell she's had some issues in her life. She's about 68, 69 now, maybe 70, I don't know. But at one time in the 1970s, see, going back to the 1970s, going back to the 1970s, At one time in the 70s, Shelley Duvall was the it girl. She was the it girl for Hollywood. She played in a lot of good movies. She played in Nashville. She played in, oh, this one psychological thriller that came out in 77 called Three Women. 
it was with her and Sissy Spacek and a few other people. It was a Robert Altman movie. But Shelley Duvall went on Dr. Phil back in 2016. A lot of people remember that interview and a lot of he got a lot of flack for that because they said that he was exploiting her, which that no good motherfucker was. Motherfucker, I can't stand him. But anyway, he was exploiting her. She recently, re she recently returned to making movies. She's going to be in an upcoming movie called Forest Hill or something like that. And I went to the, you know, Yahoo, I mean, child, Yahoo message boards are some of the most negative, nastiest. They should have kept those comments turned off. I'm scrolling down the comment section. I'm scrolling down the comments under the article talking about Shelley Duvall returning to movies. And all I see are people attacking her appearance. Well, here's the thing. Shelley Duvall is not part, or Shelley Duvall, excuse me, she is not part of the Hollywood virtual world. And when you're not part of the Hollywood virtual world, you do age like other human beings. We are all going to age. The, the alternative to that is death. If you don't age, then, you're, then you'll die. And I'm looking at these people attacking her appearance, and I'm like, oh, I get it now. I get it. And it was it was mostly men, of course. It was some women, too, because women, women can be interesting, too, about certain things. It was women, too, attacking her, which I don't understand that. But nevertheless, it was mainly men. And I get it now. People are so bamboozled and wrapped up into this virtual fake world of Hollywood. They expect everyone to stay young forever and to look like children forever. And that really ties into the, pet, the pedophile agenda that's being pushed now. And people are falling for it. Hollywood is not real, in my opinion. Hollywood is a virtual reality world. Let me tell you this. I was watching this movie called Don't Worry, Darling. And it was basically about, and I, I'm, I may spoil it for you, so if you have not seen it, spoiler alert, I may spoil it for you. I may spoil it, so... It was basically about these people who were living in this idyllic 1950-ish type of community, okay? Then come to find out it was all, it looked similar to Hollywood in a way, but it was all a virtual reality world. None of it was real. They were, the, the people that were living in those places were laying, were laying in their bedrooms, in their shitty apartments in the real world while having this virtual experience living in a rich world or living a richer lifestyle, but it wasn't real. And the more and more I look at Hollywood, the more and more I'm beginning to believe Hollywood is a virtual reality world. And it really would explain the mysterious deaths. It really would explain why people are acting weird in Hollywood. Well, a lot of them probably are going through electroshock therapy to brainwash them and to put them under mind control. See, people forgot about electroshock therapy. Carrie Fisher, who played Princess Leia in Star Wars, she was open, the late Carrie Fisher, she was very open about her getting electroshock therapy. And now when I, now when I really look back on that, that was to brainwash her and to keep her from malfunctioning and telling secrets about the Hollywood virtual world and what they were really about. And it really ties back into Anne Heche because now they're saying that Anne Heche did not have any drugs or alcohol in her system. And let's not forget that video of her coming out of that body bag like she was fighting for her life, like she was being chased. And that was a similar scenario in this movie, Don't Worry, Darling, 
It was a black woman in the movie. And see, here, here goes the symbolism with the black woman again. It was the black woman in the movie who began to realize something was not right in this idyllic 1950-ish type of community where all of the women would greet their husbands at the door when the husbands came home from work. You know, they were wearing wearing the old Kremlin's dresses and, you know, greeting the husbands at the door with um, their drinks and saying, honey, how was your day? You know, more like a Stepford wife type of energy. But it was the black woman in that movie who began to realize that something was not right. And that is a major symbol telling you that it's the black woman who carries the consciousness who really knows that something is not right in this motherfucking world right now. But of course, what they ended up doing was they gaslighted her like they do black women now. They gaslighted her and ultimately they pushed her to commit suicide. And, you know, remember a few years ago, now they've covered it up and they don't talk about it anymore. Remember a few years ago, black women People were were getting were, were well were becoming concerned that black women were committing suicide in numbers we had never seen before because black women normally didn't do that, and then now black women are coming out with all this mental health stuff that black women normally did not suffer with in that way. So it really makes me look at what's really going on. Of course, you have to shut down the black woman. Of course, you have to subdue the black woman because the black woman is the one who has the real Christ consciousness and the real consciousness. So you have to tear down, gaslight, and destroy the black woman. And that's what they did in that movie, Don't Worry Darling, because it was the black woman who went up to the white women and saying, look, something ain't right in this motherfucking community. Something ain't right. It was the black woman that said that. She was like, there's some fucked up shit going on here. You know? And ultimately, it was a virtual world. It wasn't real. And it was the universal... I'm not going to say universal. It was the ever so attempt or attempts to control the woman and to control the feminine energy. That was a good motherfucking movie. And it was a good movie because it was directed by a woman. It was directed by Olivia Wilde. And she also played in the movie as well. See, whenever women direct stuff, it's always going to be good because women are multidimensional. It's always going to be good because women can see things in ways that we as men cannot see. And I can openly admit that. I see things a little bit better than most men do because I'm gay and I, and I work with feminine energy the right way. And I, as I said, the right way. I was looking at somebody on YouTube, this child, some of these people on YouTube who claim to be transgender, I have a message for you. That is not being a woman. That is not how women act. That is not being a woman. That is being a man trying to act like a woman. When you have natural feminine attributes, it shows. You can take all the hormones you want, but that does not make you a lady and it does not make you a woman. Now, I do like Angelica Ross. She's transgender. I like Angelica Ross. That's an actress. And I have respect for Angelica Ross because she had a boyfriend that wanted to pass her off as a woman and she broke up with him and told him, no, because I'm not a female, I'm transgender. And I have respect for her for being in her own fucking energies. But this is the world that we live in. We live in the world of Antichrist AI. And that's really what the omen was showing us. It wasn't about no little boy uh, being a demon or coming from no Satan. That, that's not what it was about. It was about 
the AI agenda, antichrist agenda that was going to be implemented, especially against black people. But going back to that movie, Bye Bye Darling, oh, no, I'm sorry, Don't Worry Darling, I said Bye Bye Darling. Don't Worry Darling, it really put things in perspective about Hollywood. They're just telling you everything that's going on now. They don't even give a fuck because they know so many people. We, the people that really rock with me and the people that understand what I'm saying, we are really in the minority. We are in the minority when it comes to this because most people just want to sit on YouTube and dance all day and, you know, and do all that. It's okay to be happy. I ain't saying you can't be happy and nothing like that, you know, but they're not, they, they're not, they're not thinking. We have a right to enjoy our lives. We have a right to enjoy the holidays if we want to. You got people saying, oh, you shouldn't do this. You shouldn't celebrate Christmas. That's pagan. You should. I'm going to do what the fuck I want to do. I love the holidays. I love the energy of the holidays. So don't get me wrong. We, we can have a good time. You know what I'm saying? We can have fun. We, we were supposed to have fun. But when it's time to get busy and get down to business and get down to your occult business, and your magic, it, it, it's time to do that. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's time to do that. It's time to do that. That's just like, you know, my play little brother over there in the UK was telling me that he was a little bit disturbed about the racism that the black soccer players are receiving because people feel like they call they caused the game or whatever they 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 were responsible for it for them losing or something like that i don't know and it happened last year and they're doing it again at the at the world cup and the fans of the soccer game are attacking the black soccer players calling them racist names calling them monkeys you know what i told him Work needs to be done on them motherfuckers. You do work on them. See, they scared us with the omen. They scared us with the omen because, see, if it was Damien, Damien wouldn't let no shit go down like that. Oh, you do that? Oh. You 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 try to come at me like that? Damien would have fucked them motherfuckers up. And I'm being fictitious, talking about the movie. But you know, in the omen, Damien didn't let people get away with nothing like that. And the energies that protected him did not let people get away with anything like that. And they have spent the better part of 50 years or more trying to get us to separate from spirit because spirit is protection. Because this type of shit would not continue if black people would stop being so kumbaya. And stop being so, well, we got to love them anyway. That's Jesus talk. That's Jesus talk. And no offense to any Christians that follow that. If it works for you, it works for you. But I'm talking to occultists. I'm talking to darkness. Not evil, but darkness. With, I'm talking about dark wisdom that should be practiced when these type of people want to try to throw energy at black people, then we need to throw it back at them. We need to throw it back at them. And the shit that was happening in that movie, The Omen, something similar would happen to them because that was our power, not to be used to bully or harm people, which is what black people are trying to do now. And that's why a lot of black people are getting fucked up because you've lost spirit and you've turned into the antichrist instead of turning into the darker side of the Christ energy, which is defense, it has nothing to do with evil. It's defense. And defending yourself against everything at any cost. So going back to that movie, Bye Bye, I keep saying Bye Bye, um, Don't Worry Darling, 
When you really look at the 1950s and everything about the 1950s, was the 1950s a social experiment? Especially for the white community? Because when you really go back, they because listen, go back to the Stepford Wives. The Stepford Wives was telling you a story. Now, the first version came out in 1975. I have never seen that. But there have been, subsequently, there have been other variations of that movie. And I think it tied into robotic AI types of motherfucking energy. So was the 1950s, now I'm going to tell you, one of my elders told me, my uncle told me, and this is an uncle that I really hadn't gotten along with, you know, in a long time, but now we're starting to get along a little bit better, you know. But he was telling me that they did a lot of rituals and a lot of sinister things in the 1950s. And I have to really get up with him and ask him, I might call him today and ask him, could he elaborate on that? Because my uncle is an occultist as well. And he was telling me when we were talking that they did a lot of, um, they did a lot of shit. A lot of shit went down in the 1950s. We all know about the racist stuff. That was part of it. But the 1950s was a social experiment. And that is what I'm getting, you know, because again, even with the white community, even with y'all and y'all white women, you know how they had the women trained to come to the door with the drinks. Let me go back to that. How was your day, honey? So robotic and so orderly. Not saying that there's anything wrong with that if that's what you want to do of your own accord. But when you really look at it, when I really look at it from a side angle, going back to this movie, Don't Worry Darling, I'm wondering what was that energy? There was some control there. And you know what's so funny? None of the, the movie, Don't Worry Darling, there were no monsters in it. And when you go back to The Omen, there were really no monsters in The Omen. The only monsters were the people. They were the people. And those type of monsters are the ones we really need to be worried about. The ones that don't look demonic. There were no or so-called monstrous or demonic. Because they're the most dangerous ones. Because you don't know what they really are. You don't know that they're going to bite your, try to bite your nose off or bite your face off. And I don't mean that literally. I mean that figuratively. You don't know what they're going to do to you. Because you think because they look human. But when you go back to the omen, them motherfuckers were horrible people. They were horrible. They were killing people. They were doing all types of things. And when you really look at it in that, when you really go back to that movie, Don't Worry Darling, is that how Hollywood really operates? When someone begins to speak out, they will come and kill them. Is that what they really do? You have to watch that movie, Don't Worry Darling. Just go and watch it. Is that what they really do? Because it would explain, as I was saying earlier, and I know I'm all over the place, but hey, that's what I do. I'm the occult view. Um, that explains the mysterious disappearances and the weird behaviors. Like with Wendy Williams. Lindsay Lohan, who disappeared for many, many years, and now she's back. Richard Simmons. Where is Richard Simmons? Where is Diana Ross? Diana Ross doesn't even do interviews anymore. Where is Diana Ross? Where is Richard Simmons? You know, the gay, guru, the gay exercise guru. Where is he? I don't want to hear a message from his staff. I want to see him do an interview and say, I'm okay. Where are these people? 
So it really explains a lot of the mysterious disappearances and the weird behaviors of people. Just like going back to Carrie Fisher, how she was very open about her electroshock therapy. That's what they do when they don't want you to remember certain things. And then they'll take you out once they have no more use for you. Which is what Damien did in The Omen. When he had no more use for a person, he would just kill them. He wouldn't kill them, but whatever force behind him would kill them, which was supposed to be a satanic force. But I question that. The Antichrist is not the son of Satan. The Antichrist is the son and the creation of mankind. Mankind created the Antichrist. Don't put that on Lucifer and Satan. You all created that motherfucker. That's an energy and an entity you all created. That didn't come from no Satan and no Lucifer. That ain't no son of no motherfucking Satan and no motherfucking Lucifer. That is an AI creation of mankind. But anyway, what do I know? This is the occult view. I just came through to have a little chat. And um, see you in the next video.